Are you good enough? Are you a good enough father? Are you a good enough mother? Are you a good enough husband or wife? Are you a good enough brother, a good enough son, a good enough daughter, or a good enough sister? Are you good enough? Are you a good enough Christian? Are you good enough is a dangerous question in our world. A question that left to ourselves drives us to despair. After all, you don't have to even be a believing Christian to be able to envision a better version of yourself that you never quite live up to. And then you encounter God and it becomes even more readily impossible always envisioning what could be and yet never seems to be. A Martin Luther, a monk in the 1500s, was haunted by this very same question. Are you good enough? And like us, if we're being honest, the answer he always received was no. No, I'm not good enough. But if that was all there was to the story, we wouldn't be celebrating Reformation today. Martin Luther discovers something that changes everything for him and everything for the rest of the world. If our world wasn't so against the Christian faith in the modern day, objectively speaking, Martin Luther is one of the most influential people in the last half millennia. But it isn't really him that is influential, but it is what God reveals to him in the Word. That's the reason we're celebrating Reformation Sunday today, is because he found the answer to that question, but not in himself, but from God. You see, we ask that question maybe of other people, and we ask that question certainly of ourselves. And in Luther's time and even today, some churches cause us to ask that question of ourselves. Am I good enough? But God revealed to Luther through His Word that He never asks us that question. Are you good enough? There are many passages in Scripture that are credited by Luther himself for bringing around this understanding of what we now call the gospel this revelation from God's Word that brings peace to the mind haunted by the question, am I good enough? But our epistle reading today is one of the big ones, Romans chapter 3. So in Romans 3, we're going to go through that today, and it's going to help us sort out our situation, the situation that we find ourselves in that always is prompting us to ask ourselves the question, am I good enough? The very beginning of our epistle reading, verses 19 and 20, are the end of a section that is culminating the prosecutorial case against you, the accusations levied against you, and here's how it concludes. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. And earlier in Romans chapter 2, he talks about this being written on the hearts of mankind. So even before we come to faith in Christ, you don't have to go far to find someone who recognizes that something is not right in our world. Something is wrong with us. Something is wrong with creation. And we could all envision it in a better form, and yet we can never seem to get there. Because the law's accusation about you and about me, unfortunately for us, is true. When you're taking catechism class in our church, you learn about the three uses of the law. 
and one of those uses. The second one is that it functions as a mirror because it shows us our own sin. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight. That's what the law tells us. And an easy way to understand what the law is, is the law is all the stuff that we are supposed to do for God. All that stuff about being a good father and a good husband, fulfilling your vocational responsibilities, obeying the Ten Commandments, that's all law. And when we look at that, as Romans 3 says, we all come up short. This answers the question, am I good enough? The answer is no. But not just no for you, it says no one is good enough. Well, what is the point of that? If we're all in the same boat and the boat is we're in big, big trouble and there's no way of getting out of that trouble, what's the point? That's called despair. And if you're familiar with Luther at all, that was threatening his spiritual life. Despairing. He was trying his best, working so hard, doing extreme fasting, being in private confession with his priest for hours and hours and hours, and yet, despite all that effort, still was despairing. All he could see was God was an angry judge with standards he could never live up to. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever been trapped by that question, am I good enough? And maybe sometimes for a little while we think, yeah, I'm a pretty good person. But then something comes along and usually very rudely dissuades us of that notion. So for Luther, this brought about despair that threatened him to give up to turn away from God. But Romans chapter 3 doesn't stop at verse 20. Luther read on, and so do we. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. Now, maybe you've gotten so used to hearing that that it doesn't shock you the way that it would have shocked Luther as he read it, but the promise and the unbelievable reality of it is just as true today as it was then. The righteousness of God, the goodness of God is now manifested apart from this set of rules that I can never manage to live up to. All right, I'm intrigued. That's good news for me. Because that avenue was totally cut off, and now it seems a new one is opening up. Righteousness, goodness, apart from the law. For Luther, this verse and others like it began to disperse the cloud of despair, began to help him to get back up after being beaten down by the law. There is a hope to being good enough to being righteous. The Word of God goes on. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You and I, Martin Luther, we're all in the same boat. That brings us comfort in a couple of ways. One is, you can know that one of the things the devil tries to do is convince you that you're super messed up. You're even more messed up than everybody else that's here. You're like a super special, wicked sinner. Romans 3 is saying, nope, take a look around. Go ahead, take a look. Everybody's in the exact same boat. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But here's the good part. Those same people who have fallen short, they are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, who God put forward as a propitiation by His blood to be received by faith. 
justified in the eyes of God. To be justified means to be made right. Your record is clean. You've been deemed innocent of all the sin, all the failures. And it was given as a gift. That's a key word there, because a gift is not something earned, but something given, given in love, given in mercy. Your actions are inconsequential. Mercy is not something that is a response to something you do, but it is purely an action from God by His grace. Can you feel the relief? Can you imagine Luther's relief upon this discovery? Am I good enough? No, I'm a sinner. And I fail. I can't keep God's law. I don't do what He asks me to do, and yet I'm freed. I'm justified. I've been made righteous. I pray that you experience that relief today, for it is yours in Christ Jesus and all the times you encounter the gospel promise in God's Word, and every time you come to divine service. And that term is not accidental. Divine service was a term used to reinforce this very truth, that when you gather here, it isn't you serving the divine, but the divine serving you, as odd as that is. He's come here, He's gathered you to Himself so that He can do the work of saving you not the other way around. Praise God for that. By faith, you are justified by His grace as a gift, a gift of faith in Jesus. Because you see, God never asked you, are you good enough? Instead, in His grace, He sent Jesus, because He loved you, to make you good by taking your sin upon Himself, by dying the death that we all deserved, and rising victorious to life, and giving you His righteousness. This is the gospel, dear friends in Christ, plain and simple. God loves you, and He did the full work of salvation for you in Jesus, not earned by anything you do or by being good enough, for Christ was good enough for all and has given that goodness, that righteousness to you. You are saved, period. He paid the price, your salvation is won. This was the joy that Luther discovered that blew away his despair and that blows away ours. No, we're not good enough. No, we aren't righteous. But now we know from God's mouth itself, from His very own Word, that God loves us anyways. While we were still sinners, He sent Jesus to do all the things that we could not, to set us free from our enslavement to sin, justified, righteous in His sight. So, dear friends in Christ, when the fears of your failure and the feelings that that result from it tempt you to ask the question of yourself, am I good enough? Chase that question away. Turn to God's Word and hear the truth that now in Christ you are, that by faith as a gift His righteousness, it's yours. He has made you righteous. And Paul concludes this section in Romans by saying, then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No, but a law of faith. For we gather here today in faith, believing in the work of our Lord Jesus Christ and in believing in by that faith, you are 
justified. You are His children. You are made right in the eyes of God. You are no longer a slave to sin, but you are a free child of God. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. And so you are from the very mouth of God Himself. In the name of Jesus, amen.